Howdy y'all, Caleb here. We've got a battle report for you today. So we are playing Star Strike. We're gonna be using the points for GHP 2020 for Stormcast, um, but everything else is gonna be kind of normal as this is gonna be our last battle report before GHP 2020 gets out. So we ran this one tonight, had a little fun. So let's take a look at the lists real quick. Here's my Seraphim list we're playing. I'm gonna do Kotal's Claw, and I wanted to take three Carnosaurs. So I've got Lord Croak with Celestial Equilibrium as his spell, so he can kind of heal up something. And he's gonna be my command point generator. I'm gonna hopefully pump out a bunch of command points, especially in Kotal's Claw, where you can kind of kind of do that a little bit. Uh, I've got a Source Old Blood on Carnosaur, a Scarvet on Carnosaur with War Spear, another Scarvet. He's gonna be my general, and he's taking the Dominant Predator and the artifact, both that are required from Kotal's Claw. The command trait will let you return some command points. Anytime he spins one on a four up, you get it back. So it's kind of like Aether Quartz Brooch, but only if he spins a command point and you'll get about half of them back. So it's pretty good. And artifact eviscerating blade. That's I also like that on the war spear because any six will be two mortals. So pretty good, pretty good. We've got three units of Source Guard. I split them up into three units. I kind of like playing them that way so that whenever Croak takes a wound, I can kind of spread it around a little bit. Um, basically, I can, I, can, I can pass off three wounds before I ever lose a model doing it this way. So, I don't know, kind of fun that way. It increases your drops a little bit, but I kind of like running them separate, separate units there. I've got 10 Saurus Knights. They're gonna be following along with my Carnosaurs. And I've got four uh, 40 Saurus Warriors. So I got a big blog of Saurus Warriors. And I'm gonna pop them next to my Scarvet on Carnosaur, the General, and hopefully pump them up with some command points and have some fun. Taking an extra command point, because command points are important to this army, <laughs> and Bailwind Vortex. If you're doing math, you might realize this is only 1,900 points. Um, yeah, I didn't realize that until I was just building the list up again. So I quickly built this list to play with, play with the uh, Stormcast player, and realized that was a hundred points short. So, <laughs> oops. <laughs> so may, I'm just gonna count that as our GHB nerf because we're probably gonna have some points increase on Croak. So I'm just already planning ahead. <laughs> so if if our list goes up a hundred points for what I'm showing here, hey, it was perfect. All right, let's take a look at the Stormcast list now. Stormcast, he's taking Lord Arcanum on Torline, and he's putting him into Tempest Lords. So he's also going to be trying to generate command points. In Tempest Lords, on a four up, you get an extra command point, and then uh, the artifact for that is literally Aether Quartz Brooch. As long as the general's on the table, whenever his army spends a command point on a five up, he gets it back. So we're going to be cycling through a lot of command points in this in the in these armies. He's uh, he's taking a spell lightning blast. That's it's easy to cast. The closest enemy to you takes D three mortals is what that one is. Lord Arcanum on Griff Charger, and he's got chain lightning. So if you cast a spell, does some mortals, it can chain off to other people. And oh, the mount trait for the Tor line is a six up after save. The mount trait for our, uh, the Griff Charger gives him an extra dice when he's riding the winds. So he'll he'll roll like seven dice to run. Um, Lord Arcanum on foot, and he's got Stormcaller. That's basically Croak's spell kind of thing, board wide mortals, but you have to roll a six for, for the unit to take mortals. I think this may be the last game he takes this one because every time we've taken it, has never rolled a six. No matter how many units are on the board, he never rolls sixes for those units to give him mortals. Um, his plan here for the, for the Arcanums, uh, you got three Arcanums, and as far as we can tell, there's nothing that says you can't like stack these together. So if I were to do, you know, multiple mortals to kill off a sequitur, you could use all three of their abilities to heal that sequitur back up, revive him with one wound left, kill him again, revive him again, kill him again, revive him a third time. So as far as I can tell, you can stack that, and that also gives you two arcanums that you can use on the other arcanum. You can't use it on yourself, but you can use it on the other ones. So let me know if I'm wrong on that. So we got three units of sequiturs. And two blocks of four concussors, and then the Everblaze Comet, which I loathe. 
<laughs> that Everblaze Comet is terrible. I mean, it's really good for Stormcast, but I've been blasted by that thing way too often. Um, the Concussors, so they're going to go down in points in, per, per the uh, new GHB. So if you look at this, I think it's something like uh, 2150 right now, but with the new GHB, it comes out to 2,000 points. So on the surface, it looks like he's you know, 250 points above me because I shorted myself. <laughs> so it's going to make for an interesting game. Oh, man. Okay, so we are playing on Star Trek is our battle plan. And so nothing really happens turn one. Turn two, the objective drops somewhere here in the middle. And then turn three, before we roll for who gets it, it's going to drop on both sides somewhere on that line. And you roll two dice and see where it falls. So, all right, let's go to deployment here. So, hey, hey, I won. I finally won the side I get to put my Realm Shaper engine on. Yay. It's... <laughs> It's a 50-50 chance, but I don't think I've actually won the side to put it on yet. As you can see, uh, it's still unpainted. We've got a couple unpainted models. These guard I'm still working on. The knights don't have any riders. I'm trying to, trying to get up the patience to paint. I've got 15 knights to paint up, and I haven't painted on any of them, really. So, uh, And he's got his guys over here. Um, so here's what our deployment looks like. He's got one, one unit of sequiturs over here, one unit with the uh, tour line, one unit of sequiturs with the uh, arcanum on foot, and some uh, birds. Oh, I don't think I included that in the list, but we used some uh, aether wings also. I think we had enough points. <laughs> we may have, uh, based on, on the point drops that I've seen so far. If not, this was narrative. <laughs> um, I got my 30 block of source warriors over on this left side. Just hoping that I can get them into the middle to kind of clog some stuff up, depending on where the comet falls. These guys are all surrounding the croak just to give me some wounds to pass off as he sits on sits in the realm shaper engine. These guys right here are actually in the engine. I just have them sitting beside it so we know where they, where they are. And these knights and two carnosaurs are over here. They're gonna be heading up that way. I'm gonna hopefully use extra command points there to to buff up that unit. All right, we got our, we got our, some of the guys lined up there. My blocka, I have them with clubs. Now that's not smart for a big unit. I usually use these guys to summon from the engine of the gods, and so that's why I have them with clubs. So not the best loadout if you're taking a big horde of them. I do like that they get rend, but spears are, you just get more range with the spears. So take the spears. Got some go. So the source guard got to finish painting those guys up. The knights are over here, which I think my intent was, I think because I'm 1900 short, I, I meant to include another set of knights, and I just forgot. You got some sequiturs and the birds. There's his hero. Oh, and he is leaving off the board. He's leaving his uh, four, or his eight concussors, which they're uh, not, not WYSIWYG, but <laughs> we're going to pretend they're all concussors. And his arcanum on Griff Charger. So he, um, I deploy. I ended up my deployment first, so I gave him first turn, and he got an extra command point this time. Hey, this time I took notes per one of the comments in one of the previous videos, so so I've got notes for this one. Um, he did get an extra command point. His lightning blast went off, so he did D three mortals to this guard, killed one off of those. Um, his comet was unbound, which his comet's always tough to get off, especially against Croak who's going to be plus two to cast an unbind pretty much all game. It wasn't at turn one, so I only had plus one, but I got it. And then he failed to cast this Stormcaller um, from his Arcanum. So he killed off one guard. He really didn't move too much. He kind of moved his birds up behind this building, his Aether Wings, just to kind of get a little reaction unit going one way or the other, depending on where the, the thing fell. And that's pretty much how he ended turn one. He kind of shuffled shuffled some guys around a little bit. But in this game type, you don't do a whole lot turn one unless you can you can alpha hard and start taking some stuff off. But this was this was a waiting game until turn two to see where the objective landed. So in my turn, I did get the comet off. I caused um, eight mortal wounds total from Croak's board wide comet. I put three into his general on the tar line. 
and then uh, five into sequiturs, but because of how he can heal stuff up, it only, I only ended up getting actually three through. And then two more onto his back uh, Arcanum that's on foot back there in that back right corner. And my Realm Ship Ranger didn't do anything for me. I was trying to target, basically this was the only unit in range of any terrain, and I'd have to roll a six on that. I rolled for it a couple, I guess first maybe three rounds on that unit. They were the only ones on a terrain piece, and could never get it. In retrospect, I probably could have hit these birds, but they're painted gray. They camouflaged in with our gray uh, building there, so I didn't see them. I put Mystic Shield on the Carnosaur. I healed up that guard that was hurt from the, the Croak spell and got a couple of command points. Moved up a little bit just to, just to start heading these guys up the field to get them into position and did the same with the Knights over on the right side. Brought them up, up a little bit to start uh, getting in position to see where the, the Comet fell. There they are coming around the corner. So that ends turn one. I had three command points. He had two generated. And we go into roll off for turn two. And, oh, first we got a, the, the comet lands, the star strike. And it lands right over here, which was exactly where I wanted it. It, it landed perfectly for all these knights. He's only got really one unit of sequiturs. He's got a lot of stuff up in the sky, a lot of beef in the sky. But I like this. I've got two carnosaurs. And I've got ten knights over there, so I'm I, I like where it fell there. We roll off, and I beat him on the roll off, so I'm gonna take the turn just so I can make sure and score that one point, and I'm gonna try to try to put some more damage on his units before it gets nasty. If I didn't take this, I think he could have easily um, run these sequiturs in, and he would have scored that one, and he could have brought in the Dracoths onto my guys here and just totally blown me up and I don't think I would have ever gotten that objective. So I wanted the points so I took the turn. Um, in my turn my Comet I did get my board wide Comet off. I, I gave another three to his General and another three to his Arcanum. So his Arcanum back over here he's down to just two wounds on this guy. I know I can get him next turn hopefully. The General's getting weak. His General's taking six so he's only got four left on that guy. So I'm liking the way that's, that's feeling. I generate quite a few command points, and I spend some command points, especially on these Source Knights, but I had seven command points starting this turn. So that was pretty sweet. So I get, I get, I get uh, this, this, this list here with Croak and Kotal's Claw can generate some command points like crazy. So Realm Shape Ranger didn't do anything, but I was able to get those warriors up. I'm going to just try to take out these sequiturs that are up here on the left just so I can get rid of that threat and if his if his comet falls over in this area then I'll be set up pretty well to take on the next turn these guys I just leave here I could have pressed and gotten that but it would I think it would have left my flank open too much and and I had a decent screen with this building here to keep off the dracoths so um, they're going in the source warriors are there's the knights, and the source warriors make the charge pretty easily, but it wasn't the best charge, so I didn't get a ton of guys in. I think maybe I only had eight guys in, so 16, 16 attacks for both their things. I pumped them up with some command points, and I think I was able to hold on to most of the command points from the refund from the general, but I was able to get some command points on them. Um, he's re-rolling all his saves from the sequiturs, so I think he only loses two. <laughs> in that turn and that may be the end of that I think I only lost one source warrior in return the in coalesced in Kotal's Claw his grand maces which normally do two damage are just back down to one so that's kind of nice so I did I did reposition these guys here just to, in case he brings in the drac the concussors from this side at least I have a little bit of a screen and uh, stringing those guys out to keep, keep nine inches away from my my Realm Shaper Engine. So I score two points. In this battle plane, each, for, you score the same number of points for each round you're in. So that's what it is. His turn, he gets off the Comet on this one. So he casts it on a 10. 
Um, I had Croak. He's uh, I have plus two to cast, but I rolled I rolled pretty poorly. I don't show the I don't show the roll there. I had it written down. I rolled two ones, so I wasn't able to unbind the Everblaze. He did cast Stormcaller, but rolled sixes for every unit on the board, so didn't do any mortals. And he did two mortal wounds to my warriors. They were his, my closest unit to him on the lightning blast from his general. Um, so that comment there is not in a great spot because <laughs> it's hitting them, that guy, this unit, this unit, this unit, and this unit. So in total, he did 14 mortal wounds with that comet in this turn. Ah, that's one problem with taking the three MSU units a guard is that something like that, if, if, it, if it's an AOE, it hurts three times as bad. So um, it is, since this is the bottom of turn two, I know I'm gonna get double tapped by that comet because it's gonna hit these guys that are within five again at the top of the next turn. So that's fun. <laughs> He does drop down a unit of Concussor Shear, so outside of nine of these knights, and then he's going to bring in these Sequiturs. I knew I wasn't too worried about the Sequiturs; they can they can hit decently hard, but in Coalesce, I'm I'm really taking away most of their power. But these Dracoths here that are coming down, Concussors, are going to be nasty. I'm just hoping he fails that charge. That's what my hope is. So he drops those guys down, and. Here they come. They all make the charge. They made a, they made an awesome charge. I think it was like 11 inches or something. So they're all in into the knights, and he's able to keep um, that he's able to keep them outside of three of this carnosaur. But this guy right here was just barely within three. So he charged in these aether wings just to make sure that I can't charge this carnosaur back in or pile them in to those dracoths. Because otherwise I would have just removed these knights and then piled in my Carnosaur. So he charged these guys in. You know, that's whatever. Are they 50 points now in the new GHB? 40 points, something like that. 60, somewhere in there. It's an acceptable loss just to make sure this Carnosaur is stuck there and can't 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 pile in that way. So, um, so he does attack with the Concussors first and spit some mortal wounds I think he did the mortal wounds on the knights as well so he did some extra extra damage there and he removes seven knights from the Dracos so pretty good especially when I'm half in the damage that's 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 pretty awesome there and I can't pile them in because he did mortals on them and now the sequiturs are outside of three so he's not gonna pile in the sequiturs because he doesn't want to bring in the carnosaur and I have three knights left. The knights actually do a little bit of damage, you know, that's not bad. They had quite a few attacks. They brought one concussor down to one wound left. He may have he may have brought that concussor back up with the arcanum, maybe. Maybe that's how I got one wound back. But this Carnosaur just deletes those Aether Wings, but they serve their purpose in keeping me frozen. So uh, we have a little bit of a battle over here. I think one Sequitur survived over there. I'm, I'm still surrounding him a little bit, but he's rerolling all his saves against me is quite good. So at the, there's the end of that turn. He is able to capture this objective here. He has just enough guys on there to, to out outbody me. And now we're tied up two to two. You can see in my uh, my turn, I spent quite a few command points on that last one. On uh, my turn and his turn, I was I was spending command points like they were going out of style, trying to keep these guys alive and and getting them to do some damage. So um, the the star strike. So this right here, you know, this is where a game can be determined is on the star strike. And mine landed right here, right next to my realm shaper engine. Thank you very much. And his landed right there by my horde of source guard. Yay! So that's one of the frustrating things about uh, Shadow uh, Star Strike when you're playing this game, this game type. It's so random. It's so random. So you got to be able to adjust to it. Luckily, he can adjust pretty well because he's still got a full unit of concussors and a Lord Arcanum in the sky. So he's still going to be able to answer to that. But those positionings were ideal. 
So we roll off, and, and I win the roll off on this one by one there. Oh, the Everblaze, at the top of that turn, the Everblaze Comet does do six mortal wounds to my group there. So I do take the turn. Um, I get, before we go to that sad roll, I get no extra command points this turn. So that was that was fun. No extra command points. So I was only I think I had three total going into this turn, which you know normally for for a lot of armies that's great. But for this army, I need those command points, and I didn't get any on this one. The I tried to unbind the comet, and you can see I've got plus two to dispel that comet, and I roll three. So that was sad. So that comet's gonna stick around there for a little bit longer. It's not bad because he would he can cast it again and it'll do, does more mortals. I can get away from it here, but I would much rather much rather try to unbind his cast than leave it sitting here pulsing on my croak. Um, so my comet uh, for croak's comet we do four mortals onto um, some stuff, but he's able to bring back his arcane on foot. I think I did. I did some mortals into them, um, and he's able to bring back the Drakoff maybe. Um, so in my turn, I'm I'm gonna send these guys up this way, this Carnosaur up towards that objective to hold on to that one. He's gonna help support that. I bring my guard back around this way. Because I have a feeling he's going to bring in those Dracoths over here to this objective. It's just, it's too juicy with with only, you know, 10 guard, 8, 9 guard here and Croak to send in those Dracoths. I'm, I'm fairly confident these two Carnosaurs can do enough damage over here to take out these Sequiturs and maybe take out at least one of these Dracoths. Because uh, I keep calling them Dracoths, the Concussors. Because one concussor was on one wound, so if I can get one carnosaur to take out some sequiturs, one to take out at least one of the concussors, we'll be in business. We can get this uh, objective back. Unfortunately, <laughs> it doesn't quite work that way. Uh, here we go. Well, I don't know what pictures I've got, but I do have it written down here that my carnosaur who charged into the dracoff into the concussor did zero damage. I had a command point on him for sixes to explode. He charged, so he was at plus one. He did no damage. Those concussors, I mean, they have a three up re-rolling one, and I, my most rend I have is minus one, but good grief. No damage? He had one health left on one of those concussors, and I couldn't kill it. The other Cardasaur killed two sequiturs. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, here we go. We got the charge in. So in his fight back, he kills off all my knights, the, the last three knights with the Dracoths, and he takes this guy down to six wounds. So that was disastrous. Come on, Carnosaurs. You're supposed to be better than that. Man, it was some bad rolls, and he had some great saves because I think on the jaws I even had a couple explode, and it was gonna it was gonna do a ton of damage, but he had some great saves. It's hard to get through a three up rerolling one. Oh man. So that was that. That was how we ended that turn. So I do not capture that one, but I capture both of the other objectives. And so I get a total of six points, two objectives, round three, and we get six points. So that's how that one is. Um, in his <laughs> his turn. So he starts off and he casts an empowered arcane bolt from his tar line into this Carnosaur. You see how many wounds that Carnosaur has? So he casts it on a, on a 12, which I don't unbind. I would have had to roll an 11 to unbind it. And so now it's doing d6 mortal wounds. And what does he roll? A <laughs> 6. So he rolled three sixes, which killed the Carnosaur just straight up outright. So that was fun. So we went from the Carnosaur, who I thought was going to delete some concussors, to just exploding <laughs> in a magical spray of Arcane Bolt. Then he did a Lightning Blast, which did two mortal wounds to that Carnosaur. And <laughs> on his turn, the concussors are going to head in towards that other Carnosaur. 
Yeah, so there's his... Right after his shooting phase, those guys do five mortal wounds into this Carnosaur. And so that's that's fun. They have that breath attack they do. He moves his sequiturs over here to just to kind of screen out there. His Thor lines still up here and his other arcane arcanum. And these guys are gonna go deal with that Carnosaur there. So there's the end of his movement. He did uh, did he bring down I think he brought down the other guys. Yep, there he goes. He brought down the other concussors on this left side, and he did indeed go after that that juicy target of that um, open objective. But fortunately, he failed that one, and he had to use his reroll on it, and he failed that reroll again. So they're stuck out there. That's good. I hold this objective because if he had made that in, it would have been bad news. Bad news indeed. So he charges into this guy and easily takes him off the board. So now in, you know, two quick turns, <laughs> I lost all that over there to those dra to those concussors. Well, and that arcane bolt that just obliterated him. So that was interesting. So at this point, he was, uh, this was my son. He's, he's uh, nine and he was dancing off to the side of the table <laughs> so he was having fun that's what's important right <laughs> so there's the end of that turn as we sit so he scores three just for that one on the right hand side so he's he's gotten a lot cleared off but still ahead so going into turn four now the roll-off happens and he wins the roll-off so he's gonna take that I was hoping, like back here at this picture, if I could get this turn, if I could get the priority, I was going to send these guys just outside of three, screen him up, take that guy, screen him up, and I would have kept these guys away from that objective for, you know, another turn or two. So it, if I could have won that object, if I could have won that priority roll right there, that would have been pretty nice because I could I could have screened out those drac the concussors there for a little while. But he won that one, so that was not going to be good. So he brings those guys in on his turn, and he breath attacks those guard. He's he's just looking to score the objective there, not looking quite to kill Croak, which I think in retrospect he might have wanted to try to take out Croak. And yes, you can see Croak's uh, chair there got broken. I knocked it off the top of the <laughs> Realm Shaper engine. That's always fun. So... Once I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have some lights on this Realm Shaper engine at some point, so I'll, I'll post a video on that. On that, but it's still in the sitting there primed in my pile of shame. So he charges in. He's gonna take out all these, those guys, and he and he charges in the sequiturs. He basically just wants to hold up this Carnosaur and see if he can take some wounds off of it. If if not, then if, if he can just hold one one sequitur there, he'll he'll hold up my Carnosaur for a turn good strategy so there's there's how the turn ends did I only kill one sequitur in that turn I didn't write down how many how many uh, how many things he did oh he did do three mortal wounds to that thing from one of his uh, his spells so it's not looking all that hot for me right now I'm kind of He's got this one, and all I've got is Croak over here to deal with this. And he owns this side, and he's putting pressure here. So I'm not liking my outlook here, but it's my turn. So he does score quite a few points. He scores eight points, two objectives, four points each in round four. So he's, he's scoring quite a few. In my turn, so here's where we're starting to have some fun. So... He, they're all within range and Croak is going to start dropping mortals and we're able to take this guy out with Croak's mortals and put two more on this one and take this guy down a little bit so we're doing good with those mortals and I think we take out the on foot guy yep we take out that on foot guy and we take out the one that had only one wound left and then his Torline general is down to just two wounds so if I can get the next turn, I can I can take out his general, which will help a little bit, and maybe some more concussors, and maybe we'll have a, a fighting chance here. 
So my hero phase went pretty well. We did quite a few mortals with Croak there. And you can see uh, the, oh, the Realm Shaper engine. I, I sent the Realm Shaper engine into this guy, which actually ended up killing off that last that other concussor as well too so realm shaper engine did something yeah <laughs> so that was kind of nice um other than that the realm shaper engine didn't do too much for me this game uh, i sat croaking uh, up the whole time but that was really the only damage the the realm shaper engine outputted but that killed off a uh, concussor so i will take it for free you know might as well um, so that was the end of that first hero phase. I retreated my Carnosaur away from this unit, and I'm just going to charge these guys in. And the reason I did that is I'm my only chance in this game is banking on a double turn here so that I can take out the rest of these guys. So I retreated him out of combat, ran him, and he's within range to capture this objective um, to help me, but I'm not going to be able to capture it this turn. I'm banking on that double turn. If I don't get the double turn, it's game over. So, not a whole lot of other combat going then. I do charge the the Source Warriors there into those Sequiturs just to tie them up, try to kill them off. And we get all but one. He brought that guy back from the Tor line who was in range, probably within 18. So he brought that guy back to hang one on. And that's how we end that turn there. And the roll-off, the all-important roll-off. I get a six, so there's a chance. <laughs> there is a chance. And so Croak, again, gets to pulse all his spells. So I've basically had two turns where Croak has gotten to pulse all his uh, spells into these concussors and into this boss. So I am able to kill off this boss here on that one, and this guy's down to just one left. And he's he's just he's doing he's rolling pretty good. Croak is rolling pretty good on all the mortals, and so that's pretty nice. I did take some damage from this uh, everybody's comment here and here, but that's uh, not too bad. Um, you see my I pull back my source warriors just to kind of circle up that objective, but also just to get further back from his um, concussors that he still has alive in case he takes them over there. And then the carnosaur charges in. He's hurt. But he's able to do enough to finish off the six wounds that were left on those two concussors. So I'm able to take that objective back, and which was surprising. It you know it I just, it was all came down to that that priority roll to be honest. And then Croak getting off enough spells. He rolled I rolled pretty high on all the comets there. Looks like I did uh, ten mortal wounds on on uh, from Seraphon on that one there. So that was pretty nice. Um, so on that's the end of that turn there. That's how we ended it. And he's gonna have a big problem here because I killed off his tour line with the boardwide comet. He has no heroes left, and so that's gonna that's gonna cause him an issue. So in his turn, his only chance is to get these guys over to this objective. Now I've only got two guys on it, and he's got three dracoths. So that's what he's got to do. They move ten, and he's gonna have to make a charge. The funny thing is about this Realm Shaker engine, he just needs to make a charge into the Realm Shaper engine, and then he can pile in three to get it. And so that's his that's his goal there. As he pulls him around, and he needed a nine inch charge. Whoop, let's not curve that thing. He needed a nine inch charge to the Realm Shaper engine, and he had no rerolls. So what is that? Like a like a 30% chance, maybe? <laughs> so he rolled it, and for the game, he rolled a four. And so that was game over. So it, that's how it ended. And I ended up above him just a couple points, not too many, but he needed that, that one last objective to win the game. So major win for Seraphin. Let me go back to the board here. And it came down to a couple you know, pretty important roles there. If he had made the charge on the concussors on this side, I think I don't think I would have been able to recover from that. He would have been on the objective and scoring it an extra turn, and I would have been and my my croak would have been killed on his next turn. It would have just it would have been bad. Or if he had made that charge here, so I think he he could have done any of those. We were talking about it after the game, and I don't know if he should have brought in those concussors against this horde 
it's a lot to chew through, and especially in coalesced, you know, he's I'm 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 pulling his damage down on those those uh, concussors down to just one, and so it, it would take a lot to chew through those guys. But I, maybe that would have been a better option because I, I had nothing I had nothing to deal with him over here. It was all it was all croak. Two tur- taking two turns of croak in the face was pretty strong. It was it did quite a few mortals. Now I rolled pretty good on all my casting, and he didn't have any casters that could do anything against it. But I think we've learned the lesson not to charge croak unless you can a guarantee you make the charge and get him off the board, or you can withstand a bunch of mortals coming at you. Because once you get within ten inches of him, he's nasty. He'll he'll pepper you around the board. And that's annoying, you know. We we took out his foot hero with him, and eventually took out the general. But charging within ten, that that can be dangerous, especially if you get double turned. So it was a fun game. It came down to a couple different points where um, it was close. It could have gone either way, either way. So I like those games where it comes down to the very last, very last uh, turn priority will determine the game that's always that usually means it's a pretty fun game so um overall i was really happy with this scarvet in in kotal's claw because he's the general he's generate me command points and he's can actually do some damage with that eviscerating blade artifact where it does two mortals on sixes he's got six attacks he's gonna blow up with sixes already on that thing he's gonna cause mortals with it and then he's gonna cause. I'm gonna use his command point to even do more hits. So he can do some pretty good damage. Um, the other carnosaurs. I think. I think it was just a matter of rolled kind of bad right into the the best unit against that. And he, they should have done more damage, but they got they got wiped off the board. <laughs> so, and the knights did too. I, I really never got a chance to charge them. Maybe in retrospect, I should have charged on that that turn two just into those sequiturs just to start putting a little bit more pressure on them get get some models off the board yeah live and learn so major win for seraphim fun game even though i was playing down 100 points <laughs> um so i'm just gonna call that our our post ghb nerf so all right fun game guys man talking for 38 minutes Woo. uh sorry guys i, I usually try to keep these shorter but we had lots of picture and, and we had notes this time. So if you made it around this far, well done, guys. Leave me a comment. Let me know. How's my list? What you running these days? See you.